Hello, everybody. Welcome to IST 110. I'm, of course, Professor S, and this is today's lecture. Now, I will say today's lecture, I mean, the recording is, again, kind of short, but the idea was, is like a lot of what we did in class today was some group work. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, anyways, what we did today is, or what I'll, I'll talk about today is a refresh on course info. I'll talk more about the tiny project and talk about the group project. So why am I refreshing on the course? So the idea is, it's like when I first gave you this information, it was at the very beginning of the course, everybody else was doing the same thing. Maybe you joined late, but the idea is, it's like I, I figured some of you could use a refresher for some of the policies so that you would have an idea for what's going on. I don't want to surprise anybody. Um, so it's just to make sure we're good. Anyways, quizzes. So quizzes happen every other Wednesday. They start after class. So once everybody leaves the classroom, that's when I begin them. Um, they begin at the latest uh, 3.15 p.m. on Wednesday, and they will close uh, the earliest at 3.15 on the next Thursday. Um, and it's subject to change, and the, the length that they are could differ uh, depending upon how long I think it takes to take that quiz. Uh, every quiz is graded manually, so we go through to make sure you enter the same thing. Why is that important? Well, so for instance, grades that you enter in, um, like it's asked for like a name of something or a word, something that you have to type. If you don't type exactly what Canvas is looking for, it will mark it wrong. So we go in there to make sure like you still have an acceptable answer. Uh, and then also something that we do for every single quiz is we provide feedback. Like we say you, like there were so many problems from that related to this topic, so much related to this topic, so much related to this top, topic, and this is where you miss. So then you're not just getting a number. And the thing is, like that's a little difficult for students at first, is that um, maybe you don't know that that's a thing. Because the, the thing is, is like that feedback is a little hidden um, just because that's just the way Canvas works. Anyways, the way that you find it is that if you go into the grades tab, so you go into your Canvas page, the, the course Canvas, the course page on Canvas, oh, and get um, the grades tab, and then you go down to the quiz, you'll have a little icon that looks like this up at the top of the, the screen where it kind of looks like a clipboard. If you, I think if you click on it, um, it will give you a thing of like the different areas that you met or like where, how the different points break down. If you need any more information, you can come to my office hours. Um, and the way that you can find those office hours is in the, uh, very top of the modules page. There's a thing that's called the virtual classroom hotspot, which has access information for the live lectures, access information for the recorded lectures, which is what this is and office hours information. So me and the rest of the teaching team have all of our office hours information up. Um, we have either uh, walk-in hours or um, time, like a way for you to schedule time with us or both. I have both of those. Like I have scheduled time, which is 1 to 2 p.m. on Mondays. That's my walk-in times um, where anybody, you don't have to schedule an appointment. Uh, but then, like on Mondays and Tuesdays, I have times that people can schedule times to meet. Uh, and the link is through there. And yeah, I think that's good for that. Um, oh, the one other thing that I want to talk about is the best way to contact me. So the best way to contact me is not through my Penn State email. Please do not send email through my Penn State email. Do not use my Penn State email please <laughs> do it through Canvas. Because the thing is, it's like I have tons of students and in order to make sure I get things done fast, it makes sense for me to prioritize something that can give me more information than the Penn State email. And that's the Canvas email. Canvas email gives me information as to what class you're in and that sort of thing. So if you ask for, hey, I missed class, I, I, I missed class, what did I miss? I don't have to look up what class you're in. Um, and that sort of thing. So it's way more helpful for uh, me if you just use Canvas email. So it's like, oh, this was uh, from this uh, time here. And it's just, it helps me out so much more. So if you're expecting some sort of prompt response, make sure it's through Canvas email and it will be the most prompt. Um, admittedly, uh, I'm not the most super prompt about responding to emails, 
but I'm way more prompt about responding to Canvas emails than I am for my normal emails uh, for students. So please, please, please make sure you use Canvas email. Use Canvas email. Use Canvas email. <sighs> please. All right, anyways. So let's talk about this tiny project. So for class today, what you were supposed to do was turn in an Excel spreadsheet, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to use that information, those two columns that you came up with, to come up with a um, po some PowerPoint slides. And so you're going to use charts um, for each one of your slides. So you need to have at least two slides, one slide for one column of data, one slide for another column of data. Um, and for each one of those columns of data, you're coming up with a chart. So you're going to have two slides with each one different chart on it. And we'll go over how to save it, how to make the charts, all the information in just a second. Um, but also include some words in there to kind of summarize what's going on there. Right. I'm not looking for something super elaborate, but just something that's recognizing, like notice that more people like coffee when they uh, are eating pizza or something like that. I don't know. It, it has to make sense with the, the slide that you're presenting. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is walk through how to, um, how to use that information using my walkthrough information. Okay. All right. So you have your information on Excel and it's, it should hopefully look nicer than this with all your information that you, you had, right? And so what you're going to do is make a chart of each one of those columns that you made. So here I have one where it's letter count and we're going to use that to make a chart in uh, PowerPoint. I'm just going to make one slide for one of my things. You're going to make a slide for each one of your columns. Okay. So you should have at least two slides, one for each column. Okay. All right. So let me go into PowerPoint. I'm going to copy this information and you'll see when I use it. All right. So now we're in PowerPoint. You could put a slide for this. Um, one of the first things I like to do is change the design because it's kind of boring. Let's do something a little bit more exciting. How about this one? All right. And then we can make a title for this is like uh, my prez about my data. It's cool when you print words, right? All right, so anyways, so we go, like in home, what you do is a new slide, and usually you're going to do title and content. So um, letter, oh, actually, you know what? Instead of doing a single column, so what we could do is, let's just get rid of this one since I didn't really do anything. We want two content. Letters randomly chosen. Okay. And so what you could do, there's three ways that you could pick a chart. You could do this uh, symbol here. You could go to insert and you could do it. Where's the chart right here? Or you could just type up here chart and it will do add chart. Okay. And then when you're in here, like for instance, I said I was going to use a pie chart for my different letters. So I go to pie, I hit OK. Looks like I'm doing it here. And so then I say um, uh, letters uh, chosen. And we have A. Oh, actually, no. I, I copied the whole thing, right? So if I do control V, uh, this is from Excel. It's all in there, right? So I close um, the that little window, and now I have this um, this thing. And so I kind of like these colors are kind of hard to see. So I'm going to kind of get rid of these title. I don't really feel like I need. But if I right click and I add data labels, if you notice, I like using these callouts when I'm doing. Um, uh, the the fun findings and stuff like that. But if you want to change it so it's percentage or what's given, if you first, if you select these callouts, right click, uh, and then it's like format uh, data labels, you can check what values you want. Like maybe you want the value instead of pr the percentage. You just select the different things that you want to present there. I like the percentage. 
I'm going to X out of this. Um, and then for the description, it's like, it just have to acknowledge what's kind of going on there. I don't need any, like I said, I don't need super um, descriptive information. Just tell me something about what's going on here. It's like um, all the letters were chosen about the same amount of time, but B was chosen more. Boom, something like that. Nothing too elaborate. Uh, and so you're gonna have at least two of these, uh, at least one more slide, and that'll be good. So hopefully that's helpful. And now let's go back to the presentation. Well, the one that I was um, going through before. So one of the things that I wanted to go through was how to save this PowerPoint as a PDF. Okay, so it's pretty easy to save as a PPTX or whatever, but what about as a, a uh, PDF? And I already closed and didn't save that last PowerPoint because I thought I was done, but I'm not. Aww. So I'll so what I'll do is instead is I'll just the PowerPoint for this class. I'll walk through how to save it as a PDF. Okay, so what you do is you go into File, and then you go and you can either do save a copy and save it as a PDF, like when you go in here. So notice where's PDF? PDF should be in here. There's PDF right here. So that's an option, right? Another thing that you could do is save as an Adobe PDF, and here it you can. Um, uh, like call it whatever you want, but it will save it as a PDF and that's what you need to submit. Okay. As a PDF. All right. And we're back. So let's talk about the group project. So, um, th there's two new deliverables that I need you to work on for this week. And I gave students time or groups time to work on this in class. Uh, so two things, slides and a document. So slides from either PowerPoint or from Google Slides, whatever. The idea is it's like in those slides, you're gonna introduce a topic and you're gonna introduce each group member. So each slide for those group members, or there's gonna be a slide for each group member, right? So a slide's not gonna have just introduce all the group members all at once, each slide, each member, okay? Then for the document, I want you to brainstorm ideas for the presentation. Now I know you already have a topic, that's great, but I want you to start thinking about how you're going to present it. What makes the most sense to present this? Um, so things to keep in mind is that we're going to be watching these videos, right? So how can you both uh, present the information in a knowledgeable way and keep us interested the whole way through, right? So if you're like sitting, like if you use a webcam and you read everything that you're you're doing along the way, kind of boring. Think about um, is are you going to use PowerPoint slides? Are you going to use I don't know something? What are you going to use to to present this information? Um, and then also make sure the different things that you use that you reference the text. Uh, make sure you also look for um, like the so the different tools, techniques, and that sort of thing reference from the text. Uh, we just got done talking about these different uh, things that might be helpful for presenting and things like that. Um, but anyways, for both of these, what I'll be looking for is uh, collaboration for both, like how well you guys are working together, okay? And and on them, you're going to be telling me uh, who contributed. And I have information on the slides, and I'll, I'll try talking about it more on Wednesday. Um, so um, make sure, like since this is also a group member activity, make sure on the last slide you include everybody's name that's in your group and tell me if... Um, like if they participated in the activity. So if one person um, only helped with the slides, then for their name on the document, it would say inactive, okay? The idea is it's like, I'm gonna use this inactive to make sure that those that are deemed inactive get zero points for the assignment. Holding people accountable. All right, so just as a reminder of things that are due, you have the tiny project presentation that's due before class on next Monday. And then the group project, those things are due uh, before class on Monday. And then there's also a mid-semester survey. Um, that's, I didn't talk too much about, I didn't talk about 
but I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, it's there. Try to fill it out. It doesn't count for anything except it gives me feedback on the uh, how the class is going for you. And I'll talk more about that. Well, I'll refresh this for, or I'll remind you about all these on Wednesday. All right, I think that's good for now. I'll see you all later. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please press the like button. It lets me know I'm doing something right. If you have any questions about any of the content, please send an email through Canvas to both me and the rest of the teaching team and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Do not send it through normal uh, email. You will not get as fast response. If you have any suggestions for how I can make these videos better, please leave in the comments below. Don't forget to roundhouse kick the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified for when I post the next video. Anyway, I think that's good for now, and I will see you all next class.